welcome to my world of dogs. Today we are talking about why you should get yourself a greyhound. We are going to review dentist sticks. I'm going to take a walk in Mill Hill Park in Barnet, tell you all the good things, all the bad things about it, and then we'll finish with a health tip. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching. Welcome to the very first episode of My World of Dogs. So, in My World of Dogs, we're going to cover every topic related to dogs. So, every episode, I'm going to take you on a dog walk, explain where the area is, what the benefits are, what the disbenefits are. Then, we're going to meet somebody with a dog, what breed, we'll ask them what are the benefits of that breed, what aren't so good about the breed and help you decide what dog you might like to get for yourself in the near future. Then I'm going to do a product review and also I'm going to do a little bit on health and maybe like explain what does the meanings on a packet of dog food or you know what's good nutrition for a dog so I hope you enjoy it and this is episode one and I hope it's interesting now the first breed we're going to concentrate on is the greyhound because that's what well, my two pets are and this is an introduction so this is daddy's boy who's called Jet and this is JT now these were both retired racing greyhounds now racing greyhounds make great pets there because they've been looked after in a kennel they've always mixed with people so they're well used to mixing with people and they've been well looked after they've always been well fed and had the best veterinary care so they always come to you in very good condition now one of the downsides to a racing greyhound is that the greyhounds race from about the ages of two to four so you won't be getting a young one, except one maybe that didn't want to race, but they tend to be very rare because greyhounds actually do love racing and they do love chasing things. They, while the breed is a hunting dog, the actual racing greyhound is more a playing dog than a racing dog, or than a hunting dog because they know it's only a stuffed toy they're chasing around and they still chase it because that's what they enjoy to do. And one of the things that you might find when you get a greyhound is you may actually lose your couch because in a racing kennel they would have been sitting up because obviously the trainers wouldn't want them to get have insects or rodents so they're usually on a raised bed which means that when they get to your home and they see the couch and that thinks oh that looks very familiar that looks like what we've been had at the kennel and so they may attempt to hog the, the couch for you but they're very easy to look after. They, as most people probably think, oh, because they're the athlete of the dog world, they need a lot of exercise. And it's probably 
one of the great myths because greyhounds are the couch potatoes of the dog world. They sleep probably as much as cats do and yes they love to be out, they love to play but 20 minutes in the morning and 20 in the evening and that's they're happy with that although like every child who likes to be out if he gets to the park he wouldn't really want to come home after 20 minutes a greyhound when he's out you know he will love to be out and stay out for an hour hour and a half but it's like each one is very individual so while some of them will some of them <laughs> revert to their laziness and 10-15 minute walk and they're heading for home. Now, again, some greyhounds like to be out in the mud and the wet and the cold. Some don't. But I found with my two, they've actually, it's the heat that they don't like. They don't mind the cold, but they don't like the heat. I usually put a jacket on them if it's cold and then they plough on in the cold with no issue whatsoever. Now, we do feed them at home, we cook for them, so we will do some meat, so it'll be beef or chicken, and then we'll do a bit of rice or a bit of pasta, and then we'll do a mix of vegetables. Now, people may say, Oh, but they were brought up, they're a hunting dog, and they only eat meat. Well, yes, they might like meat, but if in their wild they caught a hare, a hare's vegetarian and his full stomach will be full of vegetables. So, yes, while they would eat the meat of the hare, they'd also be eating vegeta oh, vegetable matter from the stomach. And so... You know, it isn't good to just feed them meat, or in my opinion, maybe there's experts out there that can prove me wrong, but my opinion is that they need a mixed diet, lots of meat, vegetables, and that keeps them happy. Now, if you look, JT is 10 years of age, and he's in very good condition, and Jet is eight years of age, and again, in good condition. Now one of the negatives of racing greyhound is now not yes some of them have a prey instinct so you may have to be careful around cats with them some of them don't. Most of the dogs I've ever had have had no prey instinct. JT couldn't care less. Now Jet is a slightly different thing. Jet while he hasn't got a great prey instinct, he has a great wait till you see what I used to do instinct. So if you let him off the lead, Jet will do a lap of the field, showing everybody that cares to look, look what I used to be. I used to be a racing dog. So unfortunately, after two minor scrapes where JT or Jet actually run into people because they stepped out in front of him. Jet does tend to have to stay on a lead. JT, it doesn't matter. If you let him off the lead, he'll just walk along beside you anyway. He isn't that interested in showing what he could do. Luckily for Jet, we do have a big garden and so he gets out when he wants to. And he can run around and he does plenty of that. Now, I hope you like this. If I can think of anything else, I'll add this to why you should get a greyhound. Now, one of the things people are a little bit wary of with a greyhound is, oh, they're very big. And so I don't think I'll be able to keep one in my house. Now, yes, they are, as you can see, they are very big, but what they do is they actually sleep so much they tend to get their little spot and they like to sit down and that. they don't tend to be great at running around the house so they tend to be quite calm and relaxed and will usually just appear or 
hopefully wake up when food appears on the table and so they're not like very barky at all while greyhounds can bark they actually don't so one of the great benefits of having a greyhound is you can't go out and then have the neighbours come back and say your dog was barking the whole time he's a nuisance because greyhounds are pretty relaxed so they tend not to do any barking at all and so that's one of the good things where sometimes people will get a smaller dog and they think oh he's ideal for a smaller house and he's very yappy greyhounds aren't very laid back very relaxed and even if your house isn't that big and also as long as you have somewhere to walk them they don't need loads of walking and I would recommend a greyhound to anybody. The question people may have is are greyhounds difficult to feed? They're very big dogs so will they eat me out of house and home with the amount of food they do they eat? So if you have a look at their stomachs JT, do you see your stomach? They have a very big chest and their heart would be as big as a human because of the running but if you look, their stomach is actually really small. So, while some people like Jet do like their food, even he wouldn't be a huge eater in the scheme of most dogs of his size. And again, JT is more of a, a little picker. He is 10 years of age and he's never put on one ounce from when he was a racing dog. He's kept that, he eats what he wants leaves when he doesn't want any more as opposed to Jet who does tend to eat a bit more but isn't in any way greedy and they enjoy their food but they don't eat that much so don't worry about the bills coming in for feeding them it's not that well, great. You may encounter if you do like to let your dog off the lead is these are racing greyhounds and some people say, oh, it's very cruel because they do get injured during races. Luckily, not very often. The tracks are perfectly manicured. Dogs are all running in the same direction. And the tracks are very safety conscious. But for every dog that might get injured in a race, probably 50 are more likely to get injured over the park because they do run very fast. And as you can see from their legs, the legs aren't the strongest legs in the world. And so on an uneven surface, chasing about, they could get injured. So again, it's up to you whether you would let your dog off the lead or not. And like everything else, some of them have great recall, some don't. I've been very lucky, all my dogs have had good recall and really apart from Jet showing off to show how quick he can run I've got no issue with letting them off the lead although I do get wary as they get a bit older in case they did get injured I'd be a bit worried so that's a decision you would make but they're perfectly happy walking on a lead and they get out, get their smells read their p-mails and they're very happy. Now I have JT. Now you think he's a very big dog and he is quite a big dog for a greyhound. Now this is how much resistance JT takes on the lead. So you do not have to be very strong to be able to take JT for a walk or in fact any greyhound for a walk. There's Jet We're having a look at another dog but this shows you all you need to learn or all you need to know about taking a greyhound for a walk. They don't tend to pull and they're very well trained. So that's a big plus for anybody. So greyhounds originated in the Middle East. They're what's called a sighthound. So they can see a mouse in a hedge probably a quarter to half a mile away. Now, what would happen is, when you had the 
Bedouins who would have their tents in the deserts, all the wild dogs would be attracted to them. So they would all turn up and basically looking for food. Now the greyhounds would turn up, like all the other dogs, but the big difference the greyhounds had was the greyhounds could actually see invaders or strangers coming from a long way away. And so after a while the greyhounds were brought in to the tents and they were a good asset. Now, Alexander the Great actually used to sleep with his greyhound, not in any sexual way, but because he said that it was the only animal that he ever trusted enough to be able to sleep in his bed and never feel that he would be in danger from it. We have on the Egyptian pyramids, we've got pictures of greyhounds. It's a there's a god called Anubis, which not strictly a greyhound, was a sighthound of such. And pharaohs, the highest order the pharaoh could ever have and would lead to much celebration, would be if, if they had a son. That would be a time of rejoicing and happiness. Now, you would think that if they had a daughter that would take second, but no. The second highest festival for a pharaoh was if their greyhound had pups. So, greyhounds have always held strict order. And we had the Queen of Sheba, she had greyhounds, she always kept greyhounds. Even General Custer, on the night before the Little Bighorn, he went and he was racing his greyhounds because greyhounds went to America because obviously when the settlers were planting corn and that and all the rabbits and hares would start eating them it was handy to have the greyhound who could actually then chase and catch the hares and stop them eating the food. Now in England we used to have laws whereby if you were within such a distance of a king's forest the king would have a forest where he would have deers which they would then hunt. The greyhounds would be the means of catching them so what would happen is if you owned a greyhound because obviously a poacher might want a greyhound to catch a king's deer so they brought in very strict rules whereby if you owned a greyhound and you were within so much distance of the king's forest, you could have one hand cut off. If you owned a, if you were within a shorter distance, you could have both hands cut off. So what would happen is, the, obviously people would want to catch rabbits, so they'd wanted quite a fast dog, but obviously, like most people, you'd actually fancy keeping your hands, so you wouldn't fancy losing them. So what would happen, is that they would get a terrier type of dog and they would leave it in the forest now nothing wrong with a terrier they can't touch you for having one of them and by having it in the forest you would hope that they would breed with one of the king's greyhounds what would then happen is once they bred you got a slightly smaller dog which would be a lurcher or a whippet kind and then you could actually let them loose and catch rabbits and hares with them without any danger of losing your hands. So it was good for everyone and that's why you got the greyhounds and that's how you got the whippets and lurchers for doing two types of different things. Now, the cheetah is the fastest animal in the world and the greyhound is the second fastest. A cheetah's a cat, so a cheetah can actually go very quick, I think it's 60 miles an hour, but not for a long distance, where the greyhound can go 50, but for a much longer distance. And I think it was when they were used, so they'd be used for catching rabbits and hares, and it would be natural then that people would decide to race them. Someone would claim that their greyhound was quicker than somebody else's greyhound. So then they'd start to race them. And that's where the sport of racing came from. And while the 
horse racing has also been known as the sport of kings, greyhound racing is usually referred to as the sport of queens. May go at 50 mile an hour and be the second fastest animal in the world. You'll find that they sleep more than they're awake and they're definitely not one of the fastest animals when they're having a little stroll. They take their time, they stop, they wee, they sniff, they have a look at everything they see and they definitely don't go fast when they're walking. So we'll just cross this road, we're safe now to cross. So Jet's leading the way, as Jet's an expert, he knows the way. Now, we have JT, and as you see, sniff, sniff. So usually with a greyhound, a walk that would normally take 10 minutes probably needs to have a half hour by the time a greyhound has a sniff on everything they see. They'll have a wee and then they'll go off and see what they can sniff again. Isn't that Jet? Jet, is that right? Yep, that's right. Hold on, hold on, something about sniff. Hold on, let me go over there. I can sniff something. Yeah, no, not worth it. All right, let's keep walking then. Greyhound so much is they all have such totally unique characters to them. They're all individuals and they absolutely love people. They, they don't take much exercise. They're not the worst for eating food. They're really loving and they don't take up as much space as it looks like they do because they sleep so much at a time and they're quite happy on their little spot that they like even if it is a couch uh, any little raised area but you can't blame them for that you know they're used to it from when they've been pups they don't take a lot of walking you may be a kind of person who thinks oh i'd like a dog but i don't want one who having to go out in the snow and when it's windy and rainy and that's anything that put me off well you could be very lucky and you could get one of the greyhounds you also don't like going out in the snow and the wet and the wind and so you'll ask your greyhound do you fancy going out and the greyhound will open one eye and say it's all right mum i'm going back to bed for another five hours and so you don't have to they don't bark much they can bark but they don't tend to bark so the neighbors aren't banging on your door your greyhound kept us awake or kept us up because they're going to be asleep the same as the person next door they are such loving creatures and i would definitely recommend a greyhound to anybody the only downside again which I could suggest is when you get one grey hand, you haven't got enough. You would need another grey hand. Grey hands grow on you. And it's very rare that when you've got one, that you won't get another one. So I hope you like my little tale about why I love grey hands. And have a look if you'd like to get information. You can go to the Grey Hand Trust and they can give you information. There's lots of people who rehome greyhounds and you can go there, find out about them, maybe take one or two for a walk and see how you got on with them. But it is a bit like a drug. Once you get used to a greyhound, it becomes very addictive. Hope you enjoy greyhounds. And in the first episode of Where Can I Walk My Dog, we've come to Mill Hill Park, which is in the borough of Barnet in northwest London. And it's quite a nice little area. It has some main roads around it, so we'll take a walk around it and I'll explain the benefits and show you where you can walk your dog in Mill Hill Park. We're at Mill Hill Park now, and you can see it's a nice entrance into it. There's plenty of car parking, so as you come in, 
there's an area for car parking. They don't let lorries in, so they've got a little strap here to stop them coming in. But plenty of parking. It's free at the moment. I know there was talk that they were going to charge, but at the moment it's all free. So, now you have a little walk down here. Now we have another car park on the right. So, as you go down, there's car parking on the right hand side then. And that opens up to the car park. And today I'm with my assistants, Jet and JT. They're not so worried about me. And then there's another nice little area. So it's probably it's not hugely started to charge maybe that's why there's not as many cars so up to two hours Monday to Saturday it's free up to three hours two pound up to four hours three pound and then over four hours six pound and so you do pay and so I was wrong so now down on the right hand side you have a little cafe case no. and there on the right hand side we have a bowling green I believe they just play that more in the summer I think it's a little bit muddy and that spoils the green if you play in the winter but let's have a walk around the park and see how we go so now we have a little running track so this is the mayor of Barnet's Golden Kilometre so the path will be a kilometre around the area and then as you can see in the middle it's getting quite muddy and it's muddy here today but there's a good path for people to walk around the outside of it you've got a seat in there they put in seats for people to sit and then there's a good area to park so you can drive without or walk without having to go on the mud then there's probably a little hut there. I don't know if they live in it or they just stay there during the day if they're working here. And so it's kept in lovely condition and as you can see little dogs are running, you can still play and nice little area, trees in the middle, nice and open and not bad, there's plenty of space, it's quite a good area to bring a dog so Let's keep walking. Road. It leads to a place called Yarendine, which is an open space. You've got Mill Hill School, which is a private school, which have great facilities and sports areas. And then there's plenty of room to walk your dogs, take a walk. It's lovely. Come the spring, the woodpeckers start appearing. You can get rabbits there. There used to be deers there, but they're not there anymore because they've sort of moved themselves. There's a graveyard the other side of the road and they've moved there. This road is quite quiet. It's actually busier now because people's coming home from work and I think they can turn off and use it as a little escape road. But normally it's quite quiet so you don't have to worry about the dogs and there's fences there so the dogs can't get out on the road and it's all nicely fenced off so there's no way they can get out this side so let's keep going and see what else is in store now lots of things to see and study as the two co-hosts are very interested as they can see other dogs playing and JT's looking for someone who can give a cuddle now I've got nice trees uh, it's not a very busy park. I 
don't know about at night, but it's very safe to come and walk even on your own. Nothing to worry about. You've got another little path which leads to another entrance. All the entrances are nicely gated, so there's loads of safety factors involved. You can have your dog and not have to worry about them getting out on the road, as you can see. And there we have a horse coming along as well. So while we're just on the outskirts of North, of North London, you know, there's plenty of country we pursuits have going on. Plenty here. of litter bins. As the boys have just told me, they've discovered one there. Lots of seating. It's just getting near, ready for spring now. The buds are all coming out on the trees and starting to flower. Just nearly got hit on the head with a bee. So things are looking up, although it isn't warm today. It's not cold either, so it's a lovely day for a walk. There's a little dog having a wee run around, a little plate himself. And very nice and everywhere you look, lots of seating so you can sit and relax. Yeah, very nice area and lots of places to have a walk. And it's big enough, it's, it's not too big, but it's big enough to, you know, just have a little walk. On the far side there, I believe that's the A1. So that's quite busy, so you have to be a bit careful if you let your dog loose over there, just in case you get out on the road. But as we get down, I'll see how, how it is and whether we can get out or not. There's another little doggy coming along on a walk. And so, as you can see, if you don't want to go out on the mud, you can go along on the path. If the dogs want to go out on the mud and play, they're free. He's a happy little dog, his tail's wagging. And, oh, scared of the greyhound, so there you are, take a wee detour. That's a good wee dog. Yeah, it is quite muddy, so if you've got a dog with short legs, you probably have a bit of cleaning to do when you get in tonight. But the sun's coming out and it's a nice day for a walk. Again, we have lots of bins for putting doggy bags in. And my two boys are very good. They go before we run out, so we don't have to go. And that saves it. But a very good park. No poo on the path at all. No poo on the sides. People are very good at picking up. And yeah, it's a very clean park, kept in great condition. And I think if you ask the co-presenters, I think they will approve. Then we have the entrance to the A1, so that's a very busy road. I'm not sure exactly how it is. Let's have a walk down and we'll see. But that's one place you wouldn't want your dog to be running. Plenty of hedges to stop them getting up here. So I presume that that will be gated as well and then pretty safe so your dog isn't likely to be able to get out then and if you can see here as JT leads the way as if he's never been here before but he is giving the oh I know the way now this is a bit of a dangerous one because there is no gate here so at this end of the park you would have to be very careful that your dog is under good control and has good comeback because he could get out there and if he took a right turn it wouldn't be very good. As you can see, lovely park and up on the hill there used to be a monastery or a religious place for a priest to stay and I believe they've sold it now and turned it into luxury flats and houses so it's in a very nice part because you're only 
30 minutes into the center of London so you can actually head out into the countryside and within half hour from here you're in the heart of the country and yet if you go on the northern line within half an hour you're into the center of London so if you like all the theater events or just like to work here or in London it's not a bad place to be again lots of trees and more sitting areas and they just planted some new trees as well and so while you've got the A1 there it's actually quite camouflaged now while we've had winter and there's no leaves on the trees when the leaves start to grow it'll be quite an nice so you wouldn't while you would still hear the cars you wouldn't actually see and another little danger part is there's no fenced off area so there's a little path to take you down so you can go under the subway and come out the other side of the one but there your dog could jump up on the stairs and end up on the road so this is definitely a park for good dogs yeah, if, if your dog hasn't got good recall, it would definitely not be a place to come to as it could be quite dangerous. And there you are, you can go down the subway and your dog could get out on that road. So yeah, you definitely need a dog who has a very good recall. So maybe for greyhounds, definitely a dog, uh, park on the lead although there's a little dog there a good mannered dog so he can go on his own and no danger of him going on the road where my boys are more into sniffing so they're not worried about roads they're worried about lampposts if, if there's people playing football in the park You've still got a nice big area on the left hand side where you can let your dogs play and that has fencing to prevent them getting out on the road it's only if they come back and go down the subway they might get out further up we've got tennis courts for the public and we've got the football court fields and behind that we've got the bowling so we'll take a little walk over and see what's happening so over there. The park's really equipped for people to have lots of things to do. And so we've got a basketball court here and then we've got tennis courts further up. So yeah, it's a bit cold today. But well, after school maybe children would have come and had a game of basketball or tennis but obviously not maybe kids today are just getting a bit lazy now <laughs> when they finish school they're tired and they want to go home so nothing to do so dogs aren't allowed well seeing as the dog can you play basketball no it's, uh, it's all right they don't want to play anyway so no good and then you've got nice tennis courts there as well kept in really good condition and so there's three of them and again dogs can't play tennis either so yeah no good either for them so you're not interested in tennis or basketball please no so neither have a nice little walk down along by the tennis courts sun just starting to come out and on the left hand side we have the bowling green and on the right hand side we have a cafe which appears to be closed at the moment i know i've been here on a sunday and it's very busy and so the bowling green's in good nick it's probably because it was quite wet the last couple of days you probably can't play because it's spoiling so or maybe it just opens at the weekend and the top but in very good condition so if you like bowling get down to mill hill bowling club 
Now you also have toilets, you hold the stairs there, there is a ramp the other side but I think they might be doing work at the moment on the cafe and that's closed at the moment but you've got a nice seating area where they can put the seats at. Now the other side there used to be a potting green and I don't know are they just doing it up again it had fallen into disrepair so I'm not sure if they're bringing it to an end or doing it up they're putting paths there and you've got a playground the other side for children and I think the days of the potting area may be coming to an end as I think the little greens and everything are coming except they're putting it down and they're going to relay it I'm not sure now there's the park cafe in Mill Hill does coffee sandwiches burgers salads tapas and shawarma and schnitzels and so hopefully there will be a new pattern green there and the old one is being laid to rest Rest in peace, Putton Green. What do you think, boys? You play golf? Now you've got some smaller football pitches, probably for the younger ones, as they're not the big pitches. Then you've got a nice fitness area here on the right hand side, so you can come out and do your exercises and keep nice and fit. Uh, if you want you can just sniff the little bins whatever you prefer so we've had a nice walk around the park enjoyed ourself and I can recommend Mill Hill Park for anyone who wants to come round and pass a nice half hour with their dog it's been a good afternoon the sun's coming out and we'll be doing lots of these walks and showing you lots of places to go to hope you enjoyed it and like and subscribe and come back to my world of dogs and today we're going to review dentist sticks they're made by pedigree they're a daily oral care recommended by vets so they've got triple action, they reduce tartar, build up by up to 80%. They clean hard to reach teeth and support gum health. And they've got no added sugar. Now, they claim to have scientifically proven to reduce tartar build up when fed daily. And that's because of the shape gets between the teeth and cleans them and also they have a chewy texture and an active ingredient which makes them effective in cleaning. Now the dental treats are low in fat, they contain no added sugar and are free from artificial colour and flavours. Now the composition is they're made with cereals. Now they then have derivatives of vegetable origin. Now the only trouble with this is if you're feeding your dog is when you have a derivative of vegetable origin it doesn't actually claim what vegetable it is so if your dog is allergic or has a reaction to certain vegetables you will never know if it's in there so it's probably advisable to steer clear in that case it's because they'll probably use whatever's available at the time so you can never be quite sure what the vegetable origin is and it definitely doesn't state it on the packet. They also have minerals and this includes 2.4% sodium triphosphate. They have meat and animal derivatives. Again, doesn't say what meat or animal and so it could be and it probably may well be not the best parts of the animal. 
but again it's in small amounts so is it going to be bad probably not but can't 100% guarantee that you have vegetable protein extracts there's oils and fats now they also have a sensory additive which is a beef flavor of 842 milligrams and a chicken flavor of 286 milligrams now these are I presume because it probably hasn't got a lot of flavor so the animals or your dogs probably won't eat them so they put in a beef flavor and a chicken flavor which then encourages your dog to eat them they do suggest that you shouldn't give more than one stick per day they're not suitable for puppies and fresh water should always be available after you give them so they have a protein content of 70 percent a fat content of only 1.7 inorganic matter of six percent so they are very popular if you ever go on any of the websites to give reviews they do tend to score quite highly and they do become addictive to your dog and your dog enjoys them but I would stick to that one stick a day and I don't think you'll be far off then they do give complimentary pet food for dogs over four months large dogs should feed one stick per day this is a chewy treat that is only suitable for dogs of 25 kilograms and over now that's because I've taken uh, I've got grey hands and my dogs are on the large side so that's for the large ones now the dentist sticks they dogs love to explore the world through their mouth so it's very important to take care of their teeth pedigree dentist sticks daily oral care choose with triple action are scientifically proven to reduce the build up of tartar by up to 80 percent they clean hard to reach teeth and support gum health for healthy and strong teeth and gums you should treat your dog according to the manufacturer to a delicious effective pedigree dentist sticks chew every day there's only 124 calories a stick no artificial colors are flavors so overall they do score high on the reviews people do seem very happy with them and can't see any reason not to give your dog these at all and so they say they're recommended by vets so i think we'll have to give a thumbs up from my world of food now they come in beef flavor and chicken flavor and so you've got a little bit of a choice there and definitely the thumbs up from my world of food today is if you use an enzymatic toothpaste for your dog then the grooves in the dentist sticks if you add them for added effect put them in the grooves And then feed them to your dog this will have added effect of cleaning your dog's teeth so we'll see does it work Be back in a second. <music>